Welcome to this week's film show where we're taking a look at new releases and the latest movie news. Well, just days away from this year's Oscars, we're brushing up on some of the nominees. Two very strong contenders are currently available on Netflix here in France. And to talk us through them, I'm joined by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hi, Lisa. Now, one of those films is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It's up for five Academy Awards. In your opinion, should it be? Ah, well, this is tricky to assess because we're in a cultural moment given to more or less automatically giving positive attention to motion pictures, stories and performances that fall under the umbrella term of diversity. Now, this movie has been pretty much universally acclaimed, and I'm having a hard time figuring out whether that stems from genuine enthusiasm for this story and the way it's told, or to some extent that it's cause for celebration that it's being told at all. Now, in this adaptation of the 1982 play by August Wilson, Viola Davis portrays real-life singer Ma Rainey, called the mother of the blues. Although the story starts with a rollicking depiction of Ma Rainey's charisma on stage for an all-black audience in the South, the film centers on her trip to Chicago in 1927 from her home in Georgia to record some songs for white businessmen eager to cash in on her appeal. Her band has also made the trip. There's friction with the ambitious and talented young horn player Levy, played by Chadwick Boseman. Well, let's see him in action then in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. These records are gonna be hits. Every colored man in the world got to do his part. I'm gonna tell the white man just what he can do. They don't care nothing about me. All they want is my voice. About them songs I give you. They're not the right songs. I don't take them off your hands for you. I got my time coming to me. You don't know nothing about what kind of blood I got, what kind of heart I got beat here. Now, Lisa, Denzel Washington's a producer here. He directed and co-starred with Viola Davis as well in the screen adaptation of August Wilson's play Fences, also critically acclaimed. Washington has said that he wants to see eight plays by Wilson brought to the screen in addition to this one. Yes, uh, Davis, who has given award-winning performances of Wilson's work on stage on Broadway and won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Fences, has said, quote, August Wilson is our Shakespeare. He writes for how black people speak. He taps into the musicality of our voices, the cadences of our voices. I think Denzel Washington has definitely helped shine the spotlight on Wilson's work, and there's likely to be a built-in audience now for his material from now on. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is a black story for a black ensemble. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is well-made. It's true to the material, except for changing the setting from winter in Chicago to summer in Chicago. There's a lot of talent up on screen, with special praise for Anne Roth's costumes. But for me, unless you're curious about Chadwick Boseman's final performance, I think the versatile and very gifted Boseman's portrayal of James Brown in Get On Up might be more rewarding for a lot of viewers. And of course, you may know him as the title character in the runaway superhero hit, Black Panther. Indeed, yes. Now, well, staying with Academy Awards nominees, this film has had a lot of buzz in the best documentary category. It's a first-person underwater adventure called My Octopus Teacher, a very rare focus on a cephalod in mainstream cinema. <laughs> Yes. As critters go, I think we can probably all agree that the octopus is a really strange life form. But in this visually dazzling and emotionally rewarding film, uh, we learn to appreciate how intelligent an eight-tentacled marine creature with 2,000 individually feeling suction cups and a floppy head can be. This is a sort of love story in which only one of the participants can speak, Craig Foster. And what he has to tell us is captivating. The footage, 3,000 hours of it, was shot over a period of eight years. Craig Foster grew up in a storm-swept part of South Africa's coast and had a deliriously happy childhood diving and exploring. He grew up to be a documentary filmmaker but suffered a crippling case of burnout and so decided to go back to diving in incredibly cold water without a wetsuit or a scuba tank in hopes of finding renewed purpose. What he found was a gradual relationship of mutual trust with a small female octopus. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at My Octopus Teacher. He's 
start thinking about your own vulnerability, worried about your family, your child. I hadn't been a person that was overly sentimental towards animals before. I realized I was changing. My relationship with people, with humans, was changing. So just in terms of cinematography, the images there are amazing. Is the whole film like that? Well, one of the things I love about movies is they can take me places I am never going to go on my own. Unless I end up on a sinking ship, I will never venture into water as cold as this. Foster tells us the cold upgrades the brain. You get a flood of chemicals that make you feel as if you're flying. I'll take his word for it. Foster decides to return every single day to the relatively calm kelp forest where he first encountered this intriguing little octopus. And the footage is magnificent over the entire running time. I certainly never tired of it. Needless to say, there's an enormous amount we don't know about other species. What's moving here is that the octopus wants to know more about Craig. And really, if an octopus looks strange to us, imagine how strange a human must look to an octopus. Since there's so much else that's completely unexpected under the water, I wouldn't be that surprised to see an underwater movie theater where predators and prey take a break together to watch this film and uh, then return to the wet version of the law of the jungle. OK, well, back here on dry land, and specifically here in France, we've not been in allowed inside cinemas since the end of October, and most movie theatre facades are still frozen in time, displaying posters for movies that were playing six months ago. Yet some bright sparks decided there's a better way to make use of that space. France 24's Clovis Casali went to find out more. Paris's Latin Quarter is known for its cafes, its bookshops and its cinemas. But the cultural sector has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Here, nobody's queuing to watch films, but if people look up, they might be a little surprised by the pictures on display. Hairdressers, shopkeepers, bakers, they are the new stars of these troubled times. Our cinemas are closed, and we've had the same window dressing for the past six months. So as soon as we changed it, with very bright new posters, it showed people we were not dead. It also shows how much we, together with local businesses, are part of this neighborhood. The pictures are cinema-like, and we achieve visibility through these people. Jean-Charles Rochou is one of those put in the spotlight. A chocolate maker, he was rather surprised to be asked to pose. At first I didn't believe it. I thought maybe it was a prank. Then I looked into it and thought, what a great idea for a partnership. It's always an honour to see my craftsmanship and products on show like this. There's a bond between all of us, and that's why it's so important to go through this together and see the back of Covid. Cinema owners and the public are keen to see cultural venues reopen as soon as possible. But the government hasn't yet set a clear date. Could it be mid-May, June or even later? It will all depend on the COVID-19 situation here in France. Being able to finally head back to the silver screens would mark the beginning of a return to normal life. So, Lisa, you were telling us that those movie theatres are actually in your neighbourhood. Oh, yes. Uh, I try not to leave the house much, but when I did, from October 30th until last week, nothing budged. I was pleasantly startled to see the posters for four good French movies had morphed into a better use of prime space to promote local businesses in the 5th and 6th arrondissements. The photographer really captured the uh, movie poster vibe, and there are fake blurbs about the highlighted professionals. So, for example, for a hair salon, a pun in French, ça décoiffe, which translates as an entertaining change of pace, but also it'll make your hair stand up and take notice. And it's not just Paris. Cannes, Dijon, Lyon, Nice and Strasbourg are also giving their local shopkeepers the star treatment. A very creative initiative. Now, finally, to a film starring two literally huge movie stars who've been in the business for quite a long time. Godzilla <laughs> vs. Kong is getting people back into theatres in other countries, but it's being released direct to video here in France or VOD. Tell us more. 
I'm very disappointed that Godzilla vs. Kong won't be available in regular movie theaters here in France because it sounds like fun, the kind of fun that falls under the heading of the bigger the image, the better. It's weird to hear the words pandemic and best linked together, but Godzilla vs. Kong had a pandemic best opening in China, where this one film accounted for over 80% of movie going, racking up an impressive $70 million in a jiffy. Uh, I haven't seen the special effects extravaganza, but after being convinced, thanks to my octopus teacher, that interspecies communication can be incredibly rewarding, I'm going to magnanimously assume that we still have something to learn from really big rampaging creatures with anger management problems. Let's hope so. Well, thank you very much for that roundup, Lisa, we'll leave you with a clip of Godzilla vs. Kong. Do remember to check out our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. There's something provoking him that we're not seeing here. I'm of the same opinion. Oh! The myths are real. Yeah! 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 There was a war. Yeah! And they're the last ones standing. I keep reaching for greatness because I'm built from it. Who bows to who? Nobody gonna stop me. Here we go. Kong bows to no one. Here we go.